<laughs> Look who's there. Both DeBrusques, father and son. Yeah, Scott, get, let's get it to you in after hours. Nice to see you, men. Uh, thank you, Jake, for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's been a while. It's been, I think, yeah. seven years, so... Um, every shift is a gift. I heard what you were saying. That was a tough one tonight. Not going to lie. I didn't feel like there was a lot of guests for us. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Jake. We're going to move right past tonight's game because it's not no. going to do us any good in this discussion, Louis. Right? Fair enough. Well, <laughs> and, and, you know, last time we had you on, it was a tough night for you guys coming in here, a 6-1 loss with Boston. But we're going to get away from the game. But you're, just tell me your first matchup against Edmonton. I mean, this is a division rival for you now, your hometown team. And you always have an eye on them. They're pretty good tonight. Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, the score itself pretty much writes the story. You know, I think there was a couple uh, breakdowns that they could have possibly had even more. You know, you could say there was some that maybe shouldn't have gone in. There was some that probably could have and just missed, and their power play was lethal. But, yeah, I always keep an eye on them, obviously, try to watch you. And um, now in being a division rival, obviously, you want to have a better showing here at home. But um, there's uh, only one way to go, and it's, it's up against them, I guess. Okay, once again, I'm going to try to move past the game. <laughs> <laughs> just one in there anyway. It just got yeah. this, uh, th th this uh, tweet from Kieran. Uh, I think this is wonderful. I once in 2012 was working at Supercuts in Terwilliger, and I cut Jake's hair. It was cool because at that point he acted like he was just okay. Louis, on the other hand, took up three parking spots with his truck. <laughs> yeah, the, I can see that. Yeah, he actually, you actually live in Alberta. What do you expect? I do, <laughs> drive, I do drive a truck. Yeah, as you mentioned, Jake, uh, we did this, and Louis did as well, seven years ago in your rookie season. So we have accumulated a lot more subject matter since. But there is one thing that never gets old, and let's get right to it. Oh yeah, <laughs> yep. you're pretty so, jacked there, Lou. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> kind of wish I still looked like that. Yeah. Where and when? <laughs> That was in Scottsdale, Arizona. So when I was playing in uh, Phoenix, we uh, had a pool in the backyard. And, yeah, even yeah. though it was very nice and warm in the wintertime, you still had to heat the pool because it gets pretty cold. But uh, we used to swim every night. Who would win a pose down now? Ooh. I think, I think you, you still got would. me. No, you got me. <laughs> I'm not even going there. Okay. Let's, There's no let's, tarps coming off on this show. It might be tight. We're not Brady Kachuk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a family yeah. program. Yeah. Uh, exactly. <laughs> let's move past the pose down and get right to the pull-ups. Who couldn't have more? Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Look yeah. at this blast from yeah. the bass, eh? That's a pretty heavy guy doing pull-ups, too. That's not that long ago. <laughs> and I think Mike Lavia back in Edmonton was the one who always wanted really strict pull-ups. You worked out with Mike, yeah. obviously, at the gym. All the way Canada. down. All the way down, baby. Yeah. I think uh, you were challenged that day, Louis, to do so 10. That's 10. in Boston, right? So I did 10. That, this is actually in Nashville. They have that oh, chin bar right outside the room in Nashville. And every time you walk by there, you're like, you got to try and grab it and go. So... Yeah, My you always partner, have done Kevin Quinn there. That's a blast from the past. Yeah, you, 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 you actually would definitely kill me in chin-ups now. You work on that all the time. Yeah, we, we actually test for it here, so I uh, actually was doing more of them this year. But you've always done chin-ups. You've done chin-ups like every single time I've seen you in the gym, which is getting more and more, actually. <laughs> Evan like, always likes the gun show. He's always said that. So. <laughs> well, the, yeah, the guns like are the big arms. Feet. That's yeah. why arms do I don't even look the same as you, <laughs> yeah. but it's probably easier to pull up what I'm pulling up than what you're pulling up, in fairness. <laughs> all right, let's talk about what's going right for you, Jake. Uh, as I say, uh, moving past tonight, but... But uh, prior to tonight, three goals in three games. And I guess it was the one in San Jose a week ago tonight that changed everything for you. Playing freer since then? Yeah, I mean, obviously, just getting the first one is uh, was big. You know, it took a while, and uh, it was a great play by Husey here. And I just I just shot as hard as I could. So, But, yeah, no, it was nice. It was nice, obviously, to get the, the first one with the new team. It, it just kind of gives you a sense of relief. It's funny what the game of hockey will do for you, you know, in, in a sense of mentally. And then... Uh, Kind of got in a little bit of a roll there, and um, I guess it ended tonight, so it wasn't really much of a roll. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, but either way, you know, it's one of those things where it's just nice to get on the board and uh, and get some consistency in my game. Yeah, especially after going nine games without. But Louis, you know, you, you're an analyst, but you're also a father. You yeah. you want your son to produce. What were you thinking during the nine games of, <laughs> of, of the drought? I'll put my my analyst cap <laughs> on here. You know what? Listen, you weren't getting shots. To be honest with you, that was for me. And when you're when you're playing, when you're rolling around the net, and you're getting your opportunities puck starts to go in for you right and i think that's for any good player um that's a score if you're not getting your opportunities you're gonna have to change and work a little harder to get your opportunities i think you've done that in the last few games and you've created in the offensive zone the puck's starting to go in for you no question yeah i would agree yeah it's been one of those things where yeah that's 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 what you usually tell me yeah. just keep, yep. you know keep getting the looks you always worry when you don't get the looks and if you don't have any shots and you're kind of doing no favors. And, you know, for me, it's not just about shots. It's not about throwing the puck at the net from a real sharp angle. It's about moving your feet to get yourself to a better spot, too. Yeah. You know, if you really want it, you're going to challenge somebody. You're going to get to that spot to get the shot away. And you've always had a nose around the net. And that's, uh, that's when pucks go in for you. 
Coach Rex, who is a friend of the show, asks this. Uh, Jake, you have a wonderful relationship with your dad. What is the best piece of advice he's given you uh, or gave you when you were growing up? Oh, he just gave me some good advice there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that I think I've been asked this a couple of times and I think I've always said have fun, but you know, just just enjoy the game. You know, I was so I was so intense and so hard of myself back when I was younger. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing was just to keep believing in yourself and um, just staying with it. You know, there's teams I got cut from and he was always the guy I leaned on. There's always teams I never made, never got invited to, and um, he always kind of kept me in the right track of of believing in myself and getting to this level. So um, that's probably the second best, I guess. Have fun's always an easy one, um, but that one's a different one for sure. How much does it mean to a father to see his son succeed? I guess the answer for Louis is uh, contained in this piece of videotape, you scoring your first goal in Boston in 2017, and uh, Louis' reaction, very emotional. Um, just like the muscle pick, this never gets old either, but what do you think, Jake, when you see it, and we'll see your father's reaction here in a moment, what do you think when you, you see it seven years later? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it never gets old for me. It's one of those cheesy things, but, uh, you know, it's one of those things where it was just such a big moment for me, all the sacrifice yeah. that the whole family had, and, you know, I don't, I don't remember the last time I've seen him cry, so it was a pretty cool moment. in crying. That's just <laughs> dust in the air. You guys all make a big deal about it, but no. um, yeah. it was a great moment. I still, I, I still go back and watch that sometimes just because it was a, a great moment for our family, for you, obviously, the journey to get there, and I know it was only the first, but you never forget that one. It'll be an end-to-ender when you're 60 years old, but, yeah, yeah. it was a special moment. No so, Jake, you, you've said that's the first time you ever saw Louis cry but I can tell you, we, we've seen Louis cry, and that's oh, no. usually when they shut down the breakfast buffet at the hotel. <laughs> he does like yes, his brunch. Yes, eh? He's yeah. a big brunch guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he is yeah. a massive brunch Louis, guy. take us through Jake's yeah. first goal, I, and we're not talking NHL here. I might have even shed a tear on this one, to be honest, because similar to this year, I think this was 10 <laughs> games in or 11 games in, you scored your first ever goal. This is your very first goal in hockey, and I used to videotape not only Jake but Jordan all the time, and 94 for Ryan yeah. Smith. Oh, what a right? silly. And <laughs> yeah, you know what? Yeah, this is the Sally afterwards. You were so excited to get that one, but uh, I'm glad I had it on. They did a great job, by the way, putting that on the, the screen. For hey, that was very similar, was it not, Louis, to one he scored in Los Angeles cool two nights ago? I was going to say, did you ever think scoring that one that you're going to score one like this in the National Hockey League a little smoother on that one to finish? <laughs> Beautiful yeah. pass from Quinn Hughes, yeah, by the way, who dish. had dish. everybody watching him. Uh, no, probably not when I was younger. I mean, I just remember, I think I remember you actually just told me just go to the net and stand there, you know, like just yeah. go to the, the crease. But I remember when you sent that to me, I think it was, what, two years ago maybe? Yeah, yeah. And it was kind of out of the blue. And it just brings you back to that little kid, you know, it brings you back to that little yeah. kid that was dreaming of it and stuff. Great, terrible, and great Sally at the same time. It kind of sums my game up. Okay, in your rookie season, you went on to score 16 goals, but you really broke through in the next year when you scored 27. And a lot of them were goal scorers' goals. So we got a good look at them here. Um, I got some not apple. to say that Louis uh, didn't teach you what it takes to be a pro athlete, because he did, but uh, this skill is on a whole different level from your father's. Where does it come from? Honestly, I think a lot of it does come from him. You know, we watched a lot of hockey growing up, and, um, you know, there's a lot of things that uh, he would tell me to try, challenge guys, try to do different things even when growing up. And um, we've analyzed a lot of hockey guys at home. Obviously, you've seen him on TV commentating <laughs> for a while, but before he was commentating, I was getting the rewinds, and I was getting the, look at this little play, look at this thing. So, it's a four-hour hockey game yeah. when you watch a hockey game. Uh, yeah, seriously, you go upstairs <laughs> to watch it on a different camera if he was raging or something, and and uh, the game would be over. So it was. I knew what the score was sometimes. I actually spoiled Sidney Crosby winning it in Canada by doing that. Oh, the 2010 nervous. Olympics. The 2010 yeah. Olympics. I went upstairs, and I, I turned on the TV, and I was so nervous because the U.S. just tied it up, and then it was fast-forwarded, and it was literally right when he scored, and I, I started started screaming, so I ruined it for my whole family. <laughs> uh, degenerate, uh, the, the guy's being hard on himself with that handle, asks this. You would have spent a lot of time around your dad's team growing up. Which of his teammates did you most admire? Oh, um, you know, it's been about eight or nine when Louis finished playing, right? Yeah, yep. around there. So I think it was like kind of first memories. There was a couple guys I remember. I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head what their names were. They were always around, especially in yep. Norfolk area. There was about yep. 10. I remember, yep. I think I was playing baseball and we had all those yep. chocolate bars and I was always Casey hanging out. Casey Hankinson was one of them you really like. He was the one that showed you how to play baseball. He's a two sport athlete. Yes. In school. Sorry, Casey. Yes. Yep. Casey and, was there uh, and he's bought yeah, a lot of chocolate bars. You know what? Sean Thornton was back there, a two-time Stanley Cup winner, obviously a Boston Bruin before you. 
move. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of guys back there, but more probably when I, was, when I started broadcasting. Yeah, I would you know, agree. He was around the rink a lot, so he was, you know, Mike Ricci was one of your favorite guys. <laughs> Remember Mike Ricci? Because of the long hair. Right? Yeah. He just, you know, he picked him out and he loved him, but yeah. he was around the rink more as I started my broadcasting career in Phoenix, which they were outstanding, by the way. They gave him, him and my whole family passes to go anywhere they wanted in the rink, and he was a, he was a rink rat. He was around that rink all the time. He was in Sidney Crosby's first huddle. In 2005, when he came around the league, he was standing right in front of Sidney Crosby. In his oh, really? Yeah, the two and, cards. And got autographed cards, and that's why you got that hockey stick from Sidney Crosby. Is that why? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's no why. Yeah, because you said to him, I got hockey cards when you were in oh, the yeah, yeah. and he delivered a stick after the game to uh, the Bruins room. Yeah. You're a bona fide 20-goal scorer. The Bruins expected that of you every year, and the Canucks do as well, and maybe even more than that. What they'd really love to see from you is something like this in the playoffs. Your rookie year, round one, game seven against the Leafs and you finish them with the winning goal. Does this remain the biggest goal of your career? Um, probably, yeah. I, I would say, I mean, I've had a, I've been lucky. I've kind of had a couple, a couple of good ones as well. I'll probably say Fenway's up there, but it doesn't beat Team 7 of the playoffs. You know, I mean, that was, that was my rookie year as well. So that was a, the same year, I guess, we had the after hours. But I don't know, it beats a game seven. I think we were down in the third period to start uh, in that game. We came back and that was to put the lead up kind of later-ish. So. I got crushed on the play. I didn't even see it going. I just uh, I heard the crowd, and that, that was probably one of the best noises I've ever heard. Okay, so you are done in Boston after seven years. Why Vancouver? Well, a lot of reasons. You know, honestly, I think that I've always wanted to be closer to home, you know, obviously be closer to him and, uh, and the family. And um, they were such a good team last year. They made such steps. They have such great centermen. Uh, obviously, Quinn in the back end. I like their roster makeup. And, uh, oh, that's a tough oh, picture. Yeah. That's tough lighting Mama on there. Bear. <laughs> yeah. the big cake, you know, when you signed, she wanted to have a little party for you. We yeah. had to wait till the end of the summer with all the stuff that was going on, but ice cream cake. Too. Yeah, yeah, and also just the city, too, playing in the Canadian market. I can only imagine how much Louis ate of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah. No, no, you're good. It's actually true. He ate a lot of it. Uh, maybe a couple too many pieces, but no, the Canadian market as well. You know, you, you want to be in the playoffs in the loudest buildings, and uh, I played in some pretty loud ones in my, my career, and uh, I can only imagine what a, what a Canadian city is like. Obviously, playing against Toronto always brought the best in me in that sense of the word. So I was kind of looking forward to, you know, joining in. There's just too many things that I felt I could fit in. All right, let's go back to last February. Boston is in Edmonton. Louis is working on the broadcast of the game. And uh, we may have had the, the very first father and son broadcast uh, NHL interview in history. <laughs> Now listen, you chirped me last time, but I'm going to go off the page a little bit here. When you were young, you and Jordan made us really nice gifts when you were youngsters. And one of them, you made, you, oh, the golden tickets. And you know what? I looked over this whole coupon and it doesn't have an expiry date. So I'm cashing it in tonight, kiddo. A goal assist or 30 push-ups right here. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that right now, but I'll keep that in mind. Appreciate that. All right, love you, kiddo. Have a good one, all right? So, you know, that violates every principle of journalism. It's got yeah. conflict of interest written all over it, and it was beautiful. It really was yeah. beautiful. Um, Mom's tell idea. us more about the golden ticket. Yeah, no, I mean, honestly, I, f I completely forgot about them. I do remember doing them when I was younger. I think you can tell by the drawing. It was definitely me when I was younger uh, on the outside. But I, f I forgot about them. And to be honest with you, it was actually one of the best things uh, yeah. that we've had interactions <laughs> with. It caught me completely off guard. That's the last thing. I knew he was going to come with some heat because the first time around, I kind of gave him a little bit about sure, the hair. my hair. Yeah, so I knew you were going to come with that. But then when you came with uh, the golden ticket, I was like, uh, again, just brings you back to the kid of just... That was a Christmas present, too. What a brutal yeah. Christmas And it wasn't present. all hockey. There was, like, make my bed, yeah. clean my yeah. room, do the dishes. It, you know, it was based stuff, off but, hockey, but though. But there was a lot of hockey ones in there. <laughs> yeah. Mom kept them all, so, so I mean, there was a yeah. box of them somewhere. The choices were a goal, an assist, or 30 push-ups, and clearly you opted for the goal. Talked about Brazil's jersey. Wotherspoon, six years in the American League. Here's a backhander score! Jake DeBrusque from David Pasternak! His second on this ice sheet. Four, one, Boston. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't think he wanted to do push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, kid. Yeah, Louis, the golden ticket <laughs> works every time, I guess. <laughs> I save it for good moments. He was a little, you, you were in one coming into Edmonton at that time, so it was time to break one out. Yeah, bust you out of a little bit of a slump, and there's mom up in the stands with grandma, and uh, yeah, you know what? Nice to score on home ice for you. I mean, coming back home, there's a lot of pressure there, and it's been a tough building at times for you, but that was nice to kind of break through the last couple of times. It's been a tough building almost my whole career yeah, until about, I guess, team. two years ago, right? I mean, there's been tight games. It's not that we haven't won, but personally, I, I hadn't broken the seal till what, two, three years ago yeah, there? And then, two years ago. Two years ago, yep. and then last year, yeah. Um, but that was, yeah, I needed that, so 
keep them around. <laughs> uh, Dustin asks, since you were about 12 when your dad started broadcasting in 08, is that right? Does the math work there? 05. 05, yeah. okay. Uh, so, so nine. Okay, so you were, like, you were nine, right. So uh, do you think of him more uh, as that broadcaster or as an NHL hockey player? Hmm. I still think of it as an NHL hockey player. I mean, I think that uh, I haven't watched, I've been on the East Coast for the last, you know, seven years, and I haven't actually been able to watch him commentate many games. You usually get the U.S. feed out there. So, um, but I still think of him as an NHL hockey player. I always will. You know, it's someone that I sometimes see hockey fights get sent to me or different things uh, on social media, and I always, I always get a giggle out of it. But, um, yeah, I, I'd probably say I still look at my dad as the NHL hockey player, but you're not a bad analyst either, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the golden ticket, I think, was created when you were around eight or nine, <laughs> and uh, looking nothing like you were ever going to be, six foot one, 198 pounds. A while back, Louis showed me this picture, and he said, pick out Jake, and I could not do it. <laughs> yeah. Now, that actually is from uh, 2011, uh, the Bantam Draft. Uh, you were taken in the swift round or, or seventh round by by swift current, yes. and uh, that required some altered docu altered documents. Yeah, mom fudged the number. I didn't do it. Mom did. <laughs> Throwing under the bus right now, but yeah, you know what? Uh, Mama Bear is always going to have your best. She said you'd grow into it. So yeah. you were what four eleven and one hundred nineteen pounds. Uh, yeah. She put him at five two one hundred twenty five. It sounded better. So. I but, think everybody uh, kind of chiseled their bantam weight. <laughs> guys are chiseling points. Out. Let's be it honest here. Yeah. No. Was there ever a time when you were not the smallest kid on your team? Uh, yes, probably when I first started, I guess, growing. Uh, we had uh, Chad McCann. I actually showed it to Chad if he's watching. Yeah. Still a good buddy of yours. Still a good buddy of mine. Um, we kind of were having a little bit of, not necessarily of a race, but he was probably the guy I beat the first time. Uh, and that was in uh, Midget AAA or uh, my first year of Midget. He was the first guy I remember kind of catching um and it was a it was a good moment because i started chirping him ever since about that but it took a while and you know there was times where uh that's louis favorite picture by the way there's times where um you know it, it's one of those things that sometimes it doesn't really happen for you you know and you're, you're kind of worried about everyone's gonna tell you you're gonna grow but you don't really know and then uh it, it happened at the right time that's for sure swifty took a good chance that's that, that, those are big gloves yeah. yeah they are big gloves yeah that's, that's actually a teammate of yours yep. right that's your team Aaron Irving. Irving. that was the same year actually yeah. the bam team we went uh, we went all the way we won our league and stuff like that and uh Irv's law yeah shout out to him as well i guess uh, you know he just actually had a little baby baby for the first time so he, it's an exciting moment for him yeah. going back to your tight days should we call you spidey I don't know where this came. I mean, I know where it came from, but I I, I, I was on Spit and Chicklets a while back, and I don't know how. Uh, oh, I Can guess you confirm this, that, you? I guess. <laughs> that well, is I guess yeah, that makes sense. Sure. I think my mic's on. I'm not sure, that but that, sense, is, that is yeah, you for sure. Yeah. And uh, Mom told me today that that outfit you wore it so much, it wasn't always that stretched out. <laughs> when she first got it, it was actually a Spidey uniform, but yeah. you love Spider-Man. I don't it's actually incredible. remember. I mean, I've always liked the movies, Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire, the best ones, I still think, but... Uh, I don't remember doing that necessarily exactly, but I mean, it's the pictures are, or that's the video, don't lie. <laughs> so, you know, Jake, there is video of you as Spidey. Unfortunately, Louie and Sydney couldn't find it, so thank God. <laughs> Good luck finding stuff in our house right now. Are you, yeah. are you any better at packing uh, for road trips with Vancouver than you were with Boston? Because there's unanimous approval back then that you were the worst. The worst packer on the team. Jake, by far. Jake it has to be JD. Yeah. Oh, definitely JD. He never brings the uh, <laughs> stuff to plane to change or, or um, yeah, he's, he's. I wonder if he even knows if he's going to Canada or to Florida. So. <laughs> he just has the same suit. He, I don't think he has unpacked it ever. Same suitcase at all times, same clothes every trip. Did you not tell um, us once that you did that because you, I, on every road trip, you thought you were not going to be coming back, that you were going to be traded? <laughs> well, one year, out. yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's, you know what, honestly, that's where it all started. I started bringing a big suitcase everywhere, and I kind of liked it. I kind of liked having different options of clothes. I had one suit, uh, Mershi, but if you watch any of those videos, I, I think from uh, Nesson there, um, I get thrown under the bus for every single question, but that one's true. I, I think the guys in Vancouver, <laughs> the first trip, I brought the big suitcase out again, and then I was getting it looked like it was the size of Vinny, so everyone was like giving it to me, and then I brought a little one. So um, we'll get a taste of it, that's for sure. You <laughs> were a Sedano Chero's teammate in Boston for what four or five years. Do you find it odd that uh, your father once wow. fought Man, one of your teammates? Uh, yes, <laughs> and I'm so happy there's video of this. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that stunt. That's a good stunt right there. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Hey, I don't think he's got the right cock. Hey, I talked to him on the dad's trip, which is even crazier. Oh, but yeah. I talked to him about this fight of the bus. You remember? 
that? And I said to him, I go, you have no idea how bad of a position you had me in there. I was just trying to wait for him to slow down here. He hit me with about three of those uppercuts. I was blocking him a little bit, and then we I didn't touch him. I couldn't reach him anyway. He was six foot nine, but he didn't realize how tough he was. But he started to do a lot better in his scraps later on. And, uh, you know, I'm glad I fought him early. That was, that. Th that was a cool situation, actually, for me, because I think it was our first dad's trip, and we were just sitting on the bus and Z's there, and I, I asked him, I was like, so who won the fight? Just like kind of sat back and was waiting to see what, like, because yeah. there was no video at the time. The video was not out, so I couldn't find it. Uh, and then when the video comes out, I always kind of laugh at it. But it, it was kind of weird, but he always calls me Louie to this day. He still calls me Lou. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, this is important to get in. Signing in Vancouver has put you a lot closer to Mia, uh, your girlfriend, partner, who is completing her medical residency in Calgary. Tell us about Mia. Yeah, no, she's uh, she's grinding away. Uh, she's uh, she's doing the most. She had a couple call shifts last week, a couple 26-hour ones, and she's able to come down now on the weekends, which is which is really nice when we have uh, you know games here at home. And um, you know it was tough. It, we were both in a position where we didn't really get to choose. I mean, I guess I did in some ways where to go for her next step, and she had to kind of do the whole process of getting um, her electives and all that kind of stuff, and then, you know, usually a college or university, or, or I'm not exactly too sure how it works, but they kind of pick you mm -hmm. like a draft almost in a way, so we were deciding on whether to go to Toronto or different things, and then ended up where she uh, she's in Calgary now, so um, it's nice to be close by. That was another thing that was huge in the decision, because obviously Boston's so far away, you can't just come down for weekends, you got to make it uh, a week or two, and, um, but yeah, she's, uh, she's a little hard worker, that's for sure. Hey, we had Eric Goodbranson on the show when he was with the Calgary Flames. His wife is a dentist, and Eric's line was, I married my retirement plan. I, I don't know <laughs> what the future holds for you and Mia, <laughs> but keep that in mind, maybe. Yeah. That's a yeah. good way to end it. Jake, yeah, want to thank you for your it. time tonight. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Good yeah, to have you on the program. Thanks, thank you, you Louis. Uh, Jake DeBrusque, son of Louis and Cindy, in the first of a seven-year deal uh, with the uh, Vancouver Canucks. He was our guest on After Hours, back in a moment.